Our next guest will be instructing me as to how to improve my interviews. For one thing, he asked me to make an introductory segment in order to better provide context for the episode and for the show in general. I know you as a web search specialist, but can you explain in your words what it is that you do? Uh, so what I actually do is I am what you call um, a knowledge engineer. So a knowledge engineer, uh, I guess like the, the, um, the formal way to kind of describe it is like we provide um, like resources to support a lot of the uh, knowledge base that supports a lot of like uh, artificial intelligence and just technology in general. And this is reflected in what products? Um, you know, so it could be in the various types of products, like uh, the one that I primarily kind of support is like web search. So you enter something like Kobe Bryant, right? Stuff just kind of pops up that's related to Kobe Bryant. There's actually a process that's involved in terms of, you know, um, like training the machine to learn about what's relevant for a query about Kobe Bryant. You have things like voice search, stuff like Siri, stuff like Alexa, right? Um, you know, um, at least the industry that I'm in, we kind of support all of the sort of human cognitive, uh, I guess, examples that really help develop this type of technology. Are there any recent achievements that you're particularly proud of? Um, that's actually interesting. Um, I mean, with all this uh, coronavirus stuff going on, um, there's always sort of a need for information. I think that's what at, what my team and what my, my company can really do, uh, 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 you know, in times like uh, of crisis, I think, especially right now where people are always trying to search for the best information and the most reliable information. Um, uh, one recent thing that we had was uh, being able to kind of update all of the sort of statistics associated with COVID-19, such as identified cases, um, deaths, unfortunately, uh, per county, at least here in the U.S., at least one of the, the most recent efforts that I think is really helpful and really relevant and really useful to most folks is being able to kind of pull out that information, working with technology to be able to pull out that information and get it out to the public. So in a so, professional capacity, you've been able to uh, do your part in, in helping spread awareness about the virus. I'd like to get your perspective uh, from your personal experience at being in the Bay Area where there is where there are restrictions now on movement and, yeah. and deaths are escalating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'd like to hear that. Well, it's it's sad, man. It's really it's a uh, it's really tough. Um, I think the biggest uh, the biggest thing right now is we have one of the more uh, stricter restrictions, at least in the U.S. I think New York is uh, second only to California in terms of the way that they're kind of handling social distancing and just being and, and putting us in this sort of, sort of shelter mindset. And it's been. I think overall just stressful for everybody just because there's uh, an economic impact, which is, I mean, honestly, screwing a lot of people from A, making money uh, to keep the economy. And I'm, not, I'm not talking from, like, I, I'm no economic expert, but it, I mean, bottom line, shit is not working and it's just a clusterfuck uh, yes. of, 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 of a situation. But everything kind of grinds to a halt. How about you? Yeah, have, have you have you left your house in recent days, and and for what what activities have you done outside yeah, your house? Uh, I mean, I went out on food runs just to be able to kind of get some food. Um, you know, we have our own kind of stock here in terms of what we can eat, but um, you know, just trying to gain some sanity and just kind of see the light of day. Um, you know, I've kind of went out and um, you know. Went to the grocery store, um, ordered some takeout, bring it home to eat it here. 
I had to mail a couple of things. I, I went to the um, the post office. So, um, uh, you know, it wasn't, uh, you know, I, I'm trying not to just completely stay inside. Uh, I try to get it, you know, a little bit of fresh air and try to at least stock up a little bit. Um, so that pretty much just, you know, kind of encompasses everything that I've done when I'm not at home. When you're in the grocery or driving, are there any yeah. particular changes that you've noticed? Yeah, it's wild, man. I mean, there's generally a lot of traffic, generally just a lot of people. But now there is oh, okay. barely anybody out there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's no traffic. There's, I mean, it's very similar to at least what uh, what I've seen in terms of what's going on in Manila, where, you know, there's there's space. Yes. Um, and, and, there's, and, kind of, yes. and there's kind of like a curfew. I'm not even sure how official the curfew is, but... People tend to be, uh, if they do go out, they tend to be back before evening, before six. Well, well, I haven't, I haven't gone out to actually see whether or not people were respecting it. But at least based on what I've seen on the news, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of people that are really acting a fool and not really following, mm-hmm. uh, you know. Although, this, you know, although the, I, have, I have heard that because of the because of a uh, the stop in public transport, some people are forced to. If they do have to go like to the province, they have, they just walk the whole way, and it takes them days, which otherwise would take half a day or or even less. I mean, there's there's no, it's not like the Philippines, man. Like people have cars here, and public transportation is still very much running over okay, here. Okay, okay. I mean, the bus and the trains are still very much running. But that man, the moon was the province. Yeah. So okay. I don't know what you're thinking about. <laughs> Uh, maybe maybe going out of the state or going to some uh, other. I mean, I still think people are flying out um, if they have a reason to. But you know, I, I for the most part, I think uh, people are are not you know are are not moving around as much as we we're, we're used to. So uh, and public transportation is still there. Uber is still very much active. You know, so people have. <laughs> People have means to get around. It's not as like uh, locked down as you think, but I think there's an overwhelming kind of sense of paranoia and fear. Uh, even though there's a lot of information that's coming in every day to just kind of mm-hmm. arm us with a little bit more knowledge, uh, I think that also adds to the paranoia just because it gives people. Uh, a clearer understanding of how how dire it is and how important it is to actually kind of protect yourself. Uh, so, you know, it's it's just an eerie time, man. I I can't I can't even describe. You yeah, know, and everybody in the world feels. feels that way, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. For those who do listen to podcasts, you probably have heard of uh, this guy's podcast, even though you don't recognize his face. But can can, can you tell us about your podcast? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I have a podcast that I um, uh, I run with with my friend uh, Jack. Uh, but Jack is a college friend of mine, um, and he currently lives in Southern California. He's sort of in the San Gabriel Valley or LA, basically. And what's the name of it? The name of the podcast is Ball versus Life. Ball vs Life. Yes. Okay. Well, BS life, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and basically, it's it's evolving in terms of what we wanted it to be. I think initially we wanted it to be sort of like a, a regional uh, sort of discussion of sports. Uh, me here being in the Bay Area and then Jack being in Southern California, LA. Um, but over time, we kind of felt that it was kind of really limiting in terms of the topics that we wanted to talk about, just because... Yes, we are very interested about sports, and that's, you know, that really captures like, <laughs> I don't know, seventy five percent of what we talk about. But we do have other interests. When you did start uh, out, uh, you started out mm-hmm. just mainly talking about the NBA, but now yeah. I notice that you're you're featuring more just general lifestyle things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, just current events, obviously, like coronavirus ha- happening definitely was something that we wanted to kind of touch base on. Um, it, it, the way that it, the, the podcast is kind of morphed into um, is less about just 
uh, basketball specific, but there's still a, a strong sort of basketball connection. But the way that I kind of want to describe it is the kind of discourse, the kind of chit chat that you would you would kind of hear when you're at the gym playing five on five with a bunch of your friends on a weekly basis, right? But inevitably, it goes back to topics like family, uh, relationships, current events like coronavirus, uh, yeah, pop and, culture, and that's why you know, yeah, your podcast name does have life in it, so that covers pretty much everything. I still wanted to get your perspective on what's happening with the NBA, though. Well, it seems like this is the new normal, apparently, right? So even if we get past all of this, um, it seems like you know there's there's a general fear about being in crowds, but I think there's going to be so much of a thirst for the sport, given that it's been taken away, uh, just. You know, it's been snatched away from us unexpectedly in many ways. Depending on how far they kind of bump this up, uh, if the playoffs resume, I'm sure you know there's going to be a lot of excitement to be able to kind of get back to the old, uh, the old normal, right, of seeing these guys compete. If we somehow have this like two month break or whatever, where guys aren't playing with each other, and all of a sudden we jump right straight into the playoffs. I mean, who knows if these guys are going to be locked in the way that they would have been if they were playing uh, consecutively, you know, you know, uh, uh, normally as the season would progress. I don't know. People are saying it's going to be one of the most exciting playoff uh, playoff uh, periods, but I actually think it might be the opposite, okay. where guys are going to be rusty. Mm, yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, given the the suspended season, who would you have? Uh, awarded the MVP to, based on the 60 plus games that have been played so far. Well, as a Warrior fan, I haven't really been keeping track of the season as closely as I have in previous previous years. Um, but at least just kind of keeping keeping track at high level. You know, LeBron's been playing at a high level. The Lakers are doing really really well, and then Giannis um, has been playing at a high level as well. Um, I think it, what was he really MVP? Was he the MVP yeah, last year? I don't even remember. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly right. So I mean, I guess those are the two names. You've been doing this podcast thing for a little over a year now, and yeah, I've been I've been doing these little interviews for like barely a week. Uh, are, are there any pointers that that you think I yeah. should be more aware of? Um. Will a keep on doing it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can give you, I can give you, I can share my perspective of my experiences of yeah. the struggles yeah, of that'd be being nice. able to kind of go through it. But honestly, the only way that you can get better doing whatever you're doing and the you know whatever your goals are is basically you being able to do it and 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 you know make some mistakes and kind of understanding that you know those mistakes don't really kind of bury you and you just can move on. But at least from my perspective, what was, um, um, what, at least from viewing the initial few videos, it's just being able to kind of get all the technical stuff cleaned up, right? Um, we were even talking about it as we were doing this, like, you know, camera angle, glare on your monitor. Um, I remember ta t suggesting, um, you know, maybe using headphones. At least for me, uh, it's always useful to have the headphones in terms of talking to uh, yeah. your mm. your um, your interviewee. Yes. yes. Um, just so that there's no feedback. So at least from a technical standpoint, um, you know, those little things kind of really ensure like a really smooth, um, I guess, experience for the viewer. When I started the podcast journey, like we were really sort of regimented and we were really kind of doing a lot of planning um, just to be able to at least not sound stupid whenever we're kind of putting out takes and just talking about stuff. But as the year has progressed, we've gotten a little bit more comfortable um, just kind of, you know, spitballing and just kind of improvising on the spot. Yeah, I did notice um, like the conversation is much more free flowing at least. It's like, again, I liken it to analogy to basketball once again. It's like if you're new to basketball, like it's a little bit easier to play with a playbook just so that you know what you got to do, right? But then 
the more reps that you have over time, the more comfortable that you can you, you can be to be to improvise at the craft that you're working on. And that's the way to kind of think about it. I don't know. I mean, it seems like you're pretty kind of uh, free willing, willing with um, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, with, with with this this series. So I guess it's. You got well, a one-up on us. Well, it helps that I know the people I'm interviewing. At least I've, I, I've met them at least once. And uh, the, the second thing is that I get to edit out anything I don't like anyway. So what you see... Well, we do edit out our stuff as yeah. well. The well when, when, when you, so, yeah, so when you see the final product, it, it sounds like it's more seamless than it actually is. I mean, that's just the technical component. I think for me, it's like the creative portion is the one that's really most exciting about doing these things. Uh, and having a platform to actually kind of talk about stuff, um, you know, because we do, we do it anyway. Might as well just kind of record it and just kind of oh, see where yeah, we're at. Yeah. yeah. I have a question though. Like, I'm kind of curious. So, like, what's your goal with with this series? It's just a way, basically, to connect people together. Yeah, and I actually like I appreciate that. Like, I actually view your series. Um, like, I know you've been making videos for a long time, but at least this this set has really kind of like, it's really kind of captured my attention just because I'm like, oh yeah, it's kind of cool to know about all of the different people that you know and all of the things that they respectively do, right? There's one link to all of us, which is you. I think it's really fascinating and I'm kind of, I'm, 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 I'm curious to see where you go with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. I also like the little, little things that you add on the like on the lower left or the lower right like just to give context what images i don't even know what images you're talking about no sometimes you put like a or maybe like a photo or something or yeah maybe it's the captions yeah and, and oh yeah you put a logo like the vivo lumio logo oh that was okay. cool you're talking about like the, the thumbnail in, yeah yeah yeah, so, yeah, yeah, the thumbnail, the thumbnail. Okay, okay. You also suggested to me in private about adding adding something in, in the uh, at the start in order to give context. Can you? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot, I forgot about that already. I think you already did it though. Like just an introduction to um, who the um, the people you're interviewing yeah. are and context. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I just, I, and, I just and just for the record, for the viewers to know, he's the one who actually taught me to use the word context. It's a good word. I tend to have like a sort of talent portion where I ask the guests to I know. to do something that something extraordinary. Is there anything you can do there in the kitchen? I don't do a lot of impressions, but I can do one impression. I think pretty solid. Okay. Um, they're very similar. But I could do, um, I could do a Lilo, uh, a Stitch voice from Lilo and Stitch. Okay. So I'm, I'm assuming you're familiar with the character. Yeah. Um, and I, and I could also do sort of uh, something similar, which is like a Gollum voice. So like Smeagol from Lord of the Rings. Okay, let's hear it. So, uh, <laughs> let me do the Stitch voice. Oh, have I miss Famabu? And Famabu, no one loves, gets left to hand. Oh, come on, Steven. Very consistent, but with our expert expectations. I think it will do, yeah. My precious, my precious, fat hobbit. How is that? How was that impression? Yeah, yeah, it was good too. I mean, if I didn't, I as well. if I didn't see you right there, yeah, I would think it's Golem. Okay, now about your chugging. So you know, water is at a premium right now. Like people are hoarding like these water mm. bottles. Yeah. So, just for your show, I will yeah, and, chug this. And to be extra hydrated today, at least. Okay. Um, okay, we're ready. Okay. Just to show you that it's a full bottle. Okay. Okay. Oh uh, wait, what what ml? Uh, okay, okay, yeah. I think it's well. I saw it was five hundred ml. Yeah. Okay. Go. Okay. Go. Screenshot mo, tapos pakita mo sa corner. And you can make like the I guess the ounce uh, calculation. I was just trying to buy time. Okay. Okay. One, two, three. 
Now do the Smeagol voice. <laughs> My precious fat hobbit. Okay. How is that? Nice one. Yeah, any parting words for our audience? Um, wash your hands. Um, this is the new normal, so make sure you support Viva Lumio and buy uh, hand sanitizer. Okay. Um, give a listen to my podcast if you thought this was entertaining. Um, Unfortunately, that's just part for the course. Whenever you do a podcast, you always got to plug it. But um, mm-hmm. if you enjoyed it, you should check out uh, Ball versus Life. Ball vs Life. Um, dot uh, dot simplecast dot com, or just go to IG and search for. Yeah, Ball versus I, Life. I mean, I've seen it. I think it's on iTunes and it's on Spotify and just, yeah, yeah, yeah. just different. Apps. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So a- anywhere pods are available, just search for Ball versus Life. Yeah, yeah. But in, in, in all seriousness, just kind of take care. I mean, it's kind of a crazy time right now. Um, a lot of people are going through a lot of stress. Um, so just kind of take your, care of yourself, um, like physically and mentally. I'll tell you this, like I myself am kind of struggling with just the weight of everything. And I need to take my own, my own advice. But it's just a crazy time and, you know, just kind of... Take care of yourself. <laughs> That's the only thing you can say, honestly, at yeah, this point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I do hope you and your family are just fine there, and that you guys always take precautions and 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 are still able to maintain your your mental health and happiness. Yeah. Well, uh, we've had better days, and you know. When's the last time yeah. you saw your folks? Uh, earlier today. Oh, so I had to drop some. Okay, so he's still. still yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, they live close by, um, and so I have to drop something yeah. off. Like I saw them for like, maybe like two minutes. But are um, you in contact with them, or did you just? No, no. Yeah, I gave my mom a high five. A high five. What well, I did not give my mom a high five. I just said hello. I didn't even do like the bless or anything. Oh, okay. I just, you know, yeah. I had to drop something off at the okay, house. Okay. Yeah, it's really amazing that I can still have this conversation, man. Given that I chugged this thing, that's actually kind of... Oh. I feel like I might just kind of and, regurgitate stuff. And, and you managed to make the Smeagol voice, which is which, uh, which right almost after, sounds right? like retching also. <laughs> it's not quite as uh, impressive as Daniel's little little push-up Yeah, I thing. mean, when, I, when, when he first did it, I thought it was just one clap. Mumpala, he did it yeah. behind his back also, and another one just before doing the, the yeah, yeah. next push up. Yeah. I, I actually had to kind of scroll back and just to double check to make sure that he actually legit did it, which yeah. he did. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I challenge you, Daniel, with the Smeagol voice thing. That's my sort of combination thing. I sure as hell can't sing, so, um, or do, or cook, or save people's lives, so. You know, maybe just kind of make people laugh and, you know, whatever. Well, you could try, yeah. Yeah.